They say that looks can kill, but such a thing like this isn't the case though. Because today, I'm going to be talking about those two killer ladies. And for a good reason too. Why do you ask? Because I wanted to. So, if you like fighting video game girl characters that are deadly and stuff, then this video is a must see for you. So, if you are a fan of Dead or Alive, or Mortal Kombat for that matter, come on in. Because I'm going to tell you everything about them. I'm Daniel Paul Moore, and I'm coming your way to tell you all why I wanted a death battle. Ayane is a kunoichi of the Mugen Tenshi Ninja Clan, and the current master of the clan's Hajiman sect. She was the winner of the third Dead or Alive tournament. She is the youngest girl and the second youngest character in the series. She first appeared as a training dummy in the 1997 Sega Saturn port of the original Dead or Alive, but she later made her official debut in the 1998 PlayStation remake as an unlockable character. Since then, she has become one of the main protagonists of Dead or Alive, particularly for Dead or Alive 3, and has become one of the series' most popular characters. As such, she has made many appearances outside of Dead or Alive, most notably in the Ninja Gaiden series. Conceived when Ayame was... Ugh oh boy, I don't want to say this. Raped. By Raido, Ayane is the half-sister and cousin of both Hayate and Kasumi. Although mistreated in her youth, Ayane has worked hard to become one of the most powerful shinobi of her clan. Not only that, but she and Kasumi... What the hell? Deadpool? Who let him in? You know, people say you were dead in the comics. Just shut up and let me do my segment! What I was going to say is this. Ayane and Kasumi became best friends while they were children, although neither of them knew that they were half-sisters, despite having different fathers. Then, of course, they became enemies to one another after Kasumi left her village. In fact... Ayane is like every fanboy's favorite girl in the Dead or Alive slash Ninja Gaiden series, next to Kasumi, even though she is just fictional. I'm not giving you any chimichangas. Later, Ayane learned the truth of her conception when Ayame admitted that she was her biological daughter and the half-sibling cousin to both Hayate and Kasumi. Driven by her own anger at being cast out, Ayane devoted herself to honing her Hajimon abilities beyond any other shinobi in the clan to prove that even she, the lowly cursed child, could become something great. Ayane was consumed with jealousy over the fact that Kasumi was treated like a princess while she was treated as an outcast. So their childhood friendship withered even into their adolescence. You know what? I'm going to move on to Princess Katana of Edenia. I have a bad feeling that Deadpool is going to edit some stuff out on this video. Kitana is a character in the Mortal Kombat fighting game series who made her debut in Mortal Kombat 2. Princess Kitana is 10,000 years old, but is considered young in her realm of Edenia, and has the appearance of a young woman. Throughout the years, she rose to great importance, first as a loyal stepdaughter of Shao Kahn, then as his enemy, tearing herself away from his grasp and freeing her home realm of Edenia. She also led an army into Outworld to combat any chance of Shao Kahn rising to power again. She shared a subtle love interest with Mortal Kombat champion Liu Kang, even after he was murdered by the Deadly Alliance. 
Though she was loyal to Shao Kahn for most of her life, she aligned herself with the side of good upon learning the truth about her past and her true father. Seriously? Did you have to edit that? Kitana was one of the most popular characters in Mortal Kombat 2, and was the character that many fans used because of her combos, which always ended with a fan throw in midair. During the early production runs of Mortal Kombat 2, Kitana became notorious as an unbeatable character, as her fan lift move could be done in such a way as to completely immobilize the opponent in the corner of the screen, allowing the player using Kitana to defeat the opponent with a series of uncontested punches. Ed Boon claimed in the trading card for Katana that it was amazing seeing people doing combos with her that even he hadn't thought of. Changes were made in later versions of the game to eliminate this, as it tended to unbalance the game. Katana was supposed to be in Mortal Kombat 4, but was taken out in favor for new character Tanya. She was not, however, completely removed from the game. Her rendering was still used in Liu Kang's ending, and players could fight as her in the Nintendo 64 and PC versions via a cheat device. A character portrait of her also exists as an unused beta element in Revision 1.0 of the arcade version, though it is cropped from the trilogy ending. Katana, however, appeared in full playable form in the updated version of the game called Mortal Kombat Gold, released for the Dreamcast. Kitana was also supposed to be featured in Mortal Kombat Deception. However, it was decided that the storyline would change and have her captured in favor of the reappearance of Jade, who has not been featured in many Mortal Kombat games, though Kitana is playable in Mortal Kombat Unchained. Can it, Wade Wilson? Okay, so despite hearing of Deadpool's ramblings and so on in this video... I think that this death battle should happen. Which do you think is superior out of the two killer girls? Ayane's Arts of the Raging Mountain God Ninpo? Or Katana's Kiss of Doom Fatality move? That is up for you to decide, fans. And as always... Don't forget to HEY! Stupid Deadpool had to ruin my video! Thanks for watching! Oh, and one more thing before I end this video. Is anyone here in YouTube talented enough at doing the voice of Deadpool? Because this video could use some editing. I would appreciate it if you had the guts to do Deadpool's voice. All you have to do is record your voice to match the Merc with the mouth so I can hear it nice and clear. That said, I'm gonna go now.